we saw the rad trike come out, mm-hmm. right? And when it came out with the specs that it did and the price that it did, we were like, holy smokes, we got to come out ASAP because we had this belief of like, let's at least let customers know mm-hmm. what we have, what we've been working on so they can see it has, you know, better spec, better performance, and it's a thousand dollars less. Hey everybody, today is February 7th and it's a big day for kind of the e-bike industry, I guess you could say. Uh, As most of you guys probably already know, I'm a big fan of electric e-bikes and I had a really cool opportunity to talk to Levi Conlow, who is the CEO of Electric E-Bikes or one of the co-founders. And it was a super fun and informative conversation I had with him via Zoom, and this was a few weeks back. I was asked not to go and publish the conversation until uh, I got more information from their headquarters regarding the specs that were we talked about because they wanted to make sure that everything that was going to be final, finalized for the pre-launch, all the specs, everything that was on there was going to be accurate. So if there's any changes that need to be made, then at least I would be uh, informed upon that. Now, uh, before I start this, I wanted to go ahead and uh, Do a quick comparison because Levi does talk a lot about the Rad Trike. Now, there is no uh, lack of respect for Rad and what they've done for the e-bike industry, including the trike market itself. But he did want to go ahead and be sure that, uh, you know, that those who are looking for a trike had an opportunity to fairly compare what was on the market. And he'll do some explanation, uh, a lot of explanation about the electric XP trike, but I wanted to go ahead and also do a comparison because I was curious, what is the real difference between the rad spec, the rad trike spec versus the, uh, the electric specs, uh, XP trike spec. So let's go ahead and I'm going to run down this really quickly, just so that you guys get an idea. Cause he's going to do a lot of talking about the, the XP trike in this. And, um, when talking about why he thinks it's a better product, Again, this is some of the things that most people don't realize what's on the two. So I started by putting together a spreadsheet, going over all of the main factors I thought were kind of important that I would be looking for and just kind of spit it out there. Now, this is a lot, there's a lot more to it than just this, what you have here, but these are some of the the highlights of actually the big specs that are in there. So I'm going to run through this after we're done with this, then we're going to jump into the actual conversation and the interview uh, that I had with Levi. And he's going to go into some really big details about the bikes and some close-up shots of some certain areas. It's really cool. Definitely something to be going ahead and waiting around for. So let's start with the price. First of all, we have the, the electric XP at $14.99 and the rad trike at $24.99. So there's a thousand dollar difference. Now there are other bikes out there or trikes that are out there and i wanted to also bring those into the mix here we do have the ad motor as well now uh, you will hear levi saying that a lot of them are three thousand dollars and ad motor has been around putting out some of these trikes in mass and uh so there have a a lot of different models that are out there but the price point is so high and i'm not going to go into the details with this one because mostly we're looking at the top competitors the other one that's also kind of well known is the liberty trike and this one is at 15.98 now this is the second sub two thousand dollar trike that's out there that's kind of well known in a way uh but there's a lot of inefficiencies that this doesn't make it as really a competitor in so many different ways and um I'll be talking a little, maybe a little bit about it, but for the most part, the battery is really small. It's kind of underpowered and the wheels are really small, a lot less stability, but uh, nonetheless, no disrespect to the bike itself. It is of uh, the trike. It's only $15.98. So very close to the price point, but uh, it doesn't really compare of what you'll really get out of the XP. Now let's go ahead and go into the specs that I had here put together. So both, let's start off with the, 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 the motor. On the XP trike, you actually will get a thousand watt, 1092, almost 1100 watt peak. And it's a rear wheel drive motor. It's on the backside there that's actually being driven. Whereas the rad trike is 750 watts and it's in the front. And there's a big difference between the two types of bikes. And that'll be explained also in the interview as you'll hear it later on. Again, the battery sizes, where we're looking into different uh, real big factors here, you have 40% more amp hours capacity in the battery for the XP Trek at 14 amp hours versus 10. Now, what that actually 
kind of comes down to is what kind of distance you, you might get between the two. The range on the XP trike is about 60 miles, you'll see here, a little lower, whereas the, the Rad trike is uh, about 55. And you're talking about both of them having uh, most efficient circumstances. So it's going to vary pretty greatly, but you know, you do have a bigger battery just in general on the XP and range anxiety is a big deal. You don't want to have to be pedaling in either one of these bikes home from a dead battery. So the more, of course, size that you have on the battery, the better it's going to be. Max rider weight, 330 pounds. Now, if you look at the payload capacity, so you look at the whole bike as a whole, what it can carry, 415. So they're neck and neck on that. They're exactly the same. The foldable points, the one thing about the XP Trek, it is actually dual folding. So you have a mid frame, a mid section folding that makes it a lot smaller, cuts it almost kind of like in half. And whereas both bikes actually only also bring down the neck, but the Rad Trike does not fold in half uh, as far as the, the, the length from front to back. So that's a big advantage of the XP Trike as well. Uh, headlights, I didn't see any specs on the Rad Trike headlight. So that's all I have here is 172 Lux on the the XP Trike and the headlight on the Rad is one of their more upgraded ones, better than what they have had before, but it's a, it's a decent headlight. Both of them are actually there. They're not really there so that you'd be able to light up the whole road, but they will be actually able to be more useful as being seen on that as well. Top speed, both of them are actually stopped at 14 miles per hour. This is something that the Ad Motor has an advantage of for those of you who want to go faster. The weight of the two bikes, 70 pounds versus uh, 82. There's a big difference between their the bikes itself there. Tire sizes, you also get larger tires with the electric at a 20 inch versus the Rad at an 18. And you know, the the Ad Motors actually have fat tires. I think those are a lot larger, or I know they're a lot fatter. They're four inch, I think four inch tires, but, and the Liberty has really small tires. So again, stability is a big factor here. So now the brakes, big thing here is the hydraulic brakes on the electric is front and rear. So when you grab the brake there, there is a disc in the back that actually is in the middle between the two that will stop it. Whereas the Rad Trike actually has just kind of like your old school um, bikes where you turn your pedal backwards and then it'll lock the, the back wheel. Now it locks one wheel. Uh, I think it's only the right wheel that it says here. And it does have a mechanical front brakes, 180 millimeter rolls in the front. They should stop you, but you know, hydraulic brakes are a lot uh, more stopping. But this is something, unless I actually test it, I don't really know. So that's another thing I want to make sure I'm very clear about is that I have never ridden or haven't ridden either of these Rad or Electric XP trikes. Okay, I have been on a trike before. I've been on three wheelers and uh, even motorized three wheelers. So they both have five pedal assist levels. The controller on the Rad trike, I do not know. Uh, but for the controller on the XP Trek does have a 28 controller, does also have a heat sensor. Now with the electric 3.0 that they were doing a lot of controller testing, I'm sure they're going to do the same way. This actually has a really strong controller to push the bike up uh, certain hills. Now the Rad Trek does have a reverse feature because it has a front wheel. You can actually make the motor go backwards, but on the electric, I did not see or hear anything about a reverse feature on that, but it does have differentials which is really kind of unique amongst the other trike bikes because everybody puts a front wheel and so they have a very clean turning radius because the wheels will turn independent. But in order for the XP to really utilize the rear motor and still have a tight turning radius, they put differentials on it. So that is actually kind of a really cool thing. You know, you're gonna get two wheels actually being able to put power to the bike itself. And of course, the one that is actually needing more power will get it with a differential on there and it's in the backside. So kind of a cool feature there and incredible that they're able to keep the price down at $1,499, a $1,500 trike with differentials on it. Crazy to think that. Both of them have recommended heights of 410 to 64. So they both are uh, really made for even shorter riders and up to some taller riders. You will see something cool about the uh, electric XP Trek that it has a telescoping, telescoping, telescopic seat, which, you know, this is really an interesting thing about that as well. Now the length of the bikes are 63 inches versus 59. So the electric is a little longer, but don't forget it can fold when you're actually ready to put it into a car. So it only cuts down quite a bit at that point. And um, that's, you know, whether it's long now, when you're actually going ahead and put it away, that's, that's something to be thinking about. The width 
of the bikes itself are 30 inches versus 33 inches. That's the tool that you have there. It's kind of important because uh, one, some of the other reviews you'll see is actually fitting through a door. At 33 inches, you're just barely gonna fit through most door. At 30 and a half inches, you'll get a, a little more space to go through. I don't know how that really affects stability between the two, if one that's a big factor or not, but that's also something to keep in mind. So this is the basic uh, differences that you'll see between the two bikes. Because I really wanted to get to the interview with Levi Conlo and uh, from Electric E-Bikes. And I wanted also to say thank you very much to Levi for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the trike. So if you guys are interested in the electric and you really want to hear the story behind the trike and also some of the stuff that's not really being put out there because you're hearing it actually from the guys who put this bike together, who thought, wanted, how they wanted to do it, why the price point is, what their background is on their beliefs of why this trike is out there and um, some really just cool backstory about that. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments. What do you think about the trikes? Stay tuned for the next part of this, uh, the interview with Levi. Again, thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the interview. We saw the rad trike come out, mm -hmm. right? And, and like we thought we were going to be first to market forever. And it came out and when it came out with the specs said it did and the price said it did we were like holy smokes we got to come out asap because we had this belief of like let's at least let customers know mm -hmm. what we have what we've been working on so they can see it has you know better spec better performance and it's a thousand dollars less like maybe they don't like i get it it's gonna take you know, we'll probably start shipping those end of March or early April, hopefully. And so that's, you know, that's a considerable amount of time from now. And they may not want to wait that long. They might just want the trike today. And if they want to go buy a rad trike or a Liberty trike, go for it. But if they're willing to wait, what I can tell them is that, hey, I got something that's better than anything else that's mm -hmm. out there. And it's priced a thousand dollars less. And like, if you're willing to wait, this is what you have. So it was, you know, we basically had finished prototyping it, but we were still like very much in the process of getting all the materials done. They launched theirs and it's like, son of a <laughs> cause I really wanted to launch it in stock also, um, you know, cause pre-orders are always just so much more work. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so anyways, we just like scrambled over the course of like a day or two, I just posted it on the Facebook owners group just to like seed it out there and like get initial reaction because they could also rip me apart and be like, Hey, I hate the paint job. And like, I could have <laughs> still had time to make some changes. Yeah. So it was very much just like, okay, let's just like, we've been working on this for so long already. It's, we know what we're competing against now. So I guess like we can, we can strut it. So, yeah. um, how, how, do you mind me asking how long? Because I remember when, when you guys were coming out to 2.0 and we had talked, you said it was yeah. a year in the making yeah. after the one point yeah. had come out. How long did this one? Because uh, this is, it's a, it's a, I mean, I looked at it at first thinking, wow, that's really cool. And then I started reading about a differential. That's actually yeah. really cool. Uh, and the way that you guys have the drive put into it. Uh, how long did this take uh, from? Was so the, this was a back burner project from probably end of 2020 it was just kind of in the background wow. uh but then the last eight months was like a blitz mm -hmm. um and a lot of it kind of coincides with the reaction to the light and x premium launch um you know every time we launch a product and it's not just like building on the existing xp mm -hmm. flat platform everybody's like, where's the trike? And they just, every <laughs> single know. time I come, yeah. and it's like, there's so many of them at this point, like wanting it that I was mm -hmm. like, okay, let's, let's do it. And also the other thing that we moved into a new location and we put up Rob and I's office where every test rider that did it literally passed Robbie and I, and it wasn't unusual for me to like see someone walking their bike back and that was so frustrating to me. So I really got on Rob's nerves after a while because every <laughs> time I saw one, I would just yell at Rob. I'm like, Rob, we failed a customer. Like, because we didn't have a product that they felt like they could use. And, 
know, we could hear the conversations in the showroom also where we're located. Mm -hmm. So we were hearing people always talking about a freaking trike. So then like, <laughs> eventually it's like, all right, let's just get this thing done. Because at first we were like adult training wheels was like the desire. And there was just no way for us to do that in a safe, reliable yeah. manner. Like yeah. we just, because that was the original design is like, can, how can we get to a trike, but just like with our existing bike to like keep things really simple and scalable. Mm -hmm. And it was just an, a, a really prolonged process because we kept getting frustrated during the actual like development. So our first versions of the trike were all front hub motors, which like everybody does. And mm -hmm. the thing that stinks is they just slip out. They are terrible on hills. So like you got to lean all the way forward mm -hmm. to like try to get your traction and like <laughs> it, they're just so frustrating. And so we would run into that a couple of times and like, just like basically put the project on hold until it's like, all right, how can we do something else? So like, um, here, can you, uh, provide a screen share? Sure. Uh, yeah. But so like, when we look at this, right. Um, you know, we, we really wanted it to be like electric xp because that's clearly what has been resonating and working and so even though we have the battery in the back i still wanted the mono tube because that's kind of like our signature look mm -hmm. so we like put that there we you know try to give it this cool look and whatever but at the same time we totally understand that this is being sold to a an older clientele and everything like that like the, the, this is 65 plus is probably the main user of this. Um, and so anyways, that was, it was just a very, very long process, but what was really <laughs> sick was like getting <laughs> this amazing. figured out. Like this is what took forever. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we have is this axle right here, which mm -hmm. houses a modified 3.0 motor. So it's not even the same motor as a 3.0. It actually has more torque output than a, a 3.0 wow. motor. And we use that motor. And so you, you see one chain up here, mm -hmm. which is going uh, to the actual chain ring. And then there's this chain over here that goes to the, the whole the rear axle and <laughs> wow. differential. And then we have the hydraulic brakes sitting on this as well. So, you know, it can carry over 400 pounds and it has the torque where it can dig its heels in and go up a 20 degree grade hill. And just like it, like wow. trikes are slow, but this thing will literally just like crawl up any mm -hmm. hill that you kind of throw at it. And it's because it's this two wheel drive. And that's just like a completely different experience of what a front hub trike is like front oh, hub yeah. trikes stink like that's just the reality of it i was so frustrated with them that's why it took us so long is like they were just they didn't hit the mark and so we're we're pretty jazzed about this solution um on it and so it sits on these you know 320 by 2.6 inch tires they're mm -hmm. all pre-installed with slime it shows up to the customer fully assembled which i'm pretty sure we're the only trike period that's doing that so it's the first trike to not only have this whole motor setup which is us virtually cheating a a mid drive mm -hmm. you know but then also uh we have it being able to show up to the customer so they don't have to do any assembly whatsoever. That's amazing. That uh, shipping got to be incredibly high. That's like, it's not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think FedEx <laughs> likes this quite a bit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and so, yeah, it, it can carry all this weight. It can go up big hills. So then you got to have the braking power to back it up. So that's why mm -hmm. we went with hydraulic brakes. We, we view that mm -hmm. all trikes should have hydraulic brakes just mm -hmm. because if you're putting that much weight on it, because it may be a heavier rider or the commercial aspect of yeah. trikes is actually a really big segment is like, you know, universities and uh, hotel locations, like the maintenance workers use trikes and mm -hmm. big factories and uh, warehouses use trikes to get around from workstation to workstation and people just like throw their tools in the back. And so it's like, all right, if we want to go at that commercial aspect, it's got to be specced to be able to do that. 
Um, but there, this is actually a really cool thing. So the bike here it has two modes. It's a you know uh, a beginner mode that shows up, and this is for someone that is you know maybe a little scared that they haven't been on a bike or riding experience in a long time mm -hmm. so they get on it and the amperage is lit limited to two amps on like pedal assist one and the throttle and the pedal assistance are limited by that amperage and the top speed but it's the equivalent of someone like just gently like pushing your back mm -hmm. and so like we've tried to make this thing wildly approachable so you can get on it after not being on something for 20 or 30 years and not feel like it's going to run away from you. Even if you go throttle all the way down, it's limiting you on those two amps. And so your throttle will only take you five or six miles per hour. So it's like mm -hmm. the perfect like way to get back into riding is my thought. It's just like ultra beginner mode. But then you can go into parameter 22, change that, and then you can access you know, all 20 amps through the through the levels of assist. Uh, you can, you know, have the higher top speed and the increased torque. So if you want to use it for those commercial needs, like it's fully spec and designed for that capability, mm -hmm. but still a very approachable tameness to it. Um, and I think a lot of that is just like us having the wheels be able to turn independently or to be able to exist independently was a necessity, which also required additional work. And it just costs more to do mm -hmm. than just a fixed. Um, but we, we kind of needed that because with one of the benefits of a front hub motor is this really tight turning and everything like that. And we still really want extremely tight turning. Mm -hmm. So by having this being there, it allows those back wheels to exist independently and everything like that. So that was one of the ways we got around a drawback of not having, you know, that's probably the only pro of having a front hub motor is the tight turning, but we made up for it with adding in a differential here in the back. So we're, we're pretty jazzed about that. It comes that's standard amazing. with the elite headlight. Like we wanted this thing to look cool. Like that <laughs> at the end of the day, this thing has to look cool. And uh, for the pre-orders uh, it comes with, the front rack, the front basket, and the rear basket. So people can like really oh, yeah, rest <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, honestly, man, I look at this thing and its price, and it's like, okay, it's fifteen hundred dollars is the price that we put it at. And it comes free with the cargo pack. It comes with the 14 amp hour battery and the hydraulic brakes. And if you work it backwards from like the 3.0, the 3.0 is. 999 which is like dollar for dollar pretty next level mm -hmm. and then the 14 amp hour upgrade is 200 bucks on our website the cargo pack is a buck uh, 150 and then you know hydraulic brakes are roughly about a hundred dollar increase type of thing um mm -hmm. and then you just add a third wheel and a little bit of complexity but like in my opinion you know trikes don't need to be nearly as much as where they are being priced right yes. now on the market i think what we've done is kind of shown up and we're going to set a new floor yeah. and ceiling because like our spec is so much better than some of the co competition that is literally twice our price at $3,000. Um, but also it's like, it's just not as crazy complicated uh, on the cog side where it's just like build up the costs decide what the company needs in order to be happy with it. And then just like price it that way, because that was actually a real discussion we had for a while is it told us that the market average or what the market price was telling us was that we should price this thing north of $2,500. Mm -hmm. And that was just like, when we ran up, up the numbers, it's like, dude, all we did was add a 14 amp hour battery, hydraulic brakes, and then like a, a unique power drivetrain system Mm -hmm. But like at the end of the day, we can't rationalize going up that much. And so then we were like, well, let's just blow up the, the trike market and then see, uh, <laughs> awesome. see everybody else come. So this is probably one of the quickest positive responses we've seen just vocally from people. But already we have 
you know, several thousand people signed up for this thing. And um, I think there's just been a lot of customers. We're at what, 300,000 customers right now. Mm -hmm. So there's just been this appetite and people waiting. It's like, okay, when are they going to do it? When are they going to do it? And so I, I feel relieved to finally have those people off my back who have been (laughs) yelling at me of like making a trike. So yeah, we uh, we are seeing, I mean, when I told everybody about the trike coming out, all the wives, honestly yeah I mean, and it's not necessarily a girl's bike it's just that yeah. they're you know they've all ridden or tried our, our our electrics and honestly we love the power but it's intimidating sure. for someone who hasn't been on a bike for 20 years so like i have so Thousand many percent. yeah my wife my wife you know when she's asked have you do you go riding and she said no i rode the electric and you know at first no power that's how she got yeah. used to it and then sure. turn on a little bit and she tells everybody they're really powerful. I mean, so she's intimidated sure. by a lot of them. And totally. when a trike comes out, I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And same with the uh, the guys that ride with me. I mean, they're they're in their 70s. So their wives are of similar age and they're just not comfortable riding an electric bike that goes 20 miles an hour. So a trike, it, I love to, I love hearing that you're saying, saying you're having that scaling of the uh, the, the low end startup because that seems to that's that terrifies some people honestly. It's yeah, we like, just got to build their confidence up, right? Yeah, they got to yeah. build up their confidence, their familiarity with the balance aspect, and then mm-hmm. like once they get going, they can like get back into riding, being a part of their life. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm very much looking forward uh, to just starting to ship these out and everything because it's just been so heavily requested. And I think it's going to bring a lot of people into riding that otherwise just haven't been able to participate because I I think some of these trikes at 3000 bucks, like that is insane. Like there's no reason to be charging a customer that much. Uh, And so I think the attainability is one of the things that like, although electric trikes did exist prior to us, they just weren't attainable and and mm-hmm. that hopefully we can drag the rest of the market down. Now, how you guys are not getting, I mean, my first, honestly, my first thought was $14.99. They probably doesn't have a lot up to it. I mean, that without even knowing anything, when you see a $14.99 price, thinking sure. that other, I mean, two wheel bikes cost on average nowadays, a lot of them on the regular market is $15, 1400 And yeah. as I started looking into it, I couldn't believe a differential. I mean, or the, the rear hub motor, I think, holy cow. How are no, you and just like yeah. the torque of this thing and, you know, the hydraulic brakes and the fact that it comes standard with the 14 amp hour battery, like, because we know that at the end of the day, we're direct to consumer company. So people are always going to compare, just go to the spec sheet. Mm-hmm. And what they're going to see is like our competition may have you know, disc brakes that or coaster brakes, and we have hydraulic brakes. All right, so we can win there. They have 10 amp hour batteries. We have a 14 amp hour battery. We can win there. Their newton meters of torque might be sitting at 40. We're sitting at 65, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the fact that it's two wheel drive compared to their front hub motor. So like we wanted to make it a no brainer and literally just stack it where you can- (laughs) feel such confidence where it's like a bike is nothing more than the componentry that makes it up. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think, I think it's hit the right mark and yeah, I'm just looking forward to uh, getting these bad boys out there. And it's foldable. (laughs) Yeah. And it's foldable. Well, and like (laughs) I obsess over this idea of it's my job and my company's, you know, job to build bikes, not to try to upcharge or, Mm -hmm anything like just have the bike show up fully assembled like that's how we can stay really scalable and and grow with this um you know what's actually funny is this standover height of 13.8 inches it's about five inches lower than our step through and yeah it was just we were on the owners groups we're very active on the owners groups just kind of lurking and just watching and (laughs) You know, we would always see people talk about like, hey, I'm having a tough time getting on the step through and it'd be some like older woman. And then a bunch of comments would be like, hey, just tilt it at 45 degrees and like, then you should be good. Mm. And then like, we were pretty far along in our development of this product. This was maybe four or five months ago from now. And we basically reset it where it's like, okay, let's redo it it's got to be at a 45 degree angle. So we literally grabbed a step through measured 
how tall it would be and we're like okay we got to be under 14 inches that's a that's our new goal so like (laughs) it was it was so many things along the development of this thing would just pop up and then it's like oh shoot we gotta we gotta (laughs) add this in so our, our product development meetings on this thing were were lengthy but yeah we're we're super jazzed about it and it's just it's obviously answering a need and if we're legit trying to be the greatest urban transportation solution ever. We have to make bikes that meet all of our customers' needs. And we've just, you know, candidly in 2019 through 2022, we had failed them because we did not have a product that could fit the mobility or balance needs of some individuals. Mm -hmm. And so they're just totally missing out on it. And it's like, all right, let's not have that be part of the story in 2023. And that's kind of where uh, where we landed. So, yeah. Is there any regulation issues about it being a bicycle on, I mean, or on a bike trail? Or do you know, I mean, I have not, don't have any familiarity with trikes actually looking into them. Can these be ridden on every bike trail that you know of? Or are there some places that they have to be worried about? You know, I don't know that answer. I don't know if I would ride a trike on a bike trail, though, because trikes are naturally just like have their their challenges and, you know, they sit wider and everything like that. So I, I would say a paved trail for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I don't know that answer. Now, we did design a lot of the geometry of this to meet ADA compliance, because like one of the big customer groups of, uh, of trikes isn't just mobility issues, but people maybe with like special needs really like trikes and Mm -hmm, stuff like mm -hmm. that. So we really drilled into the ADA compliance aspects to be similar in some of the geometry required by like wheelchair manufacturers Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, But yeah, I I don't have the answer on the uh, trail. Oh, Uh, I I meant bike lanes. I'm sorry, not bike trail. Oh, sure. Oh yeah. 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 No, these can totally be used in bike lanes. Uh, Yeah. I actually, one of our riders is uh, in the category of actually needing a lot of ADA assistance or, and he he tells me um, he seriously like, he saw this and he said uh, he's going to make a little miniature handicap placard so that he's going to stick it out. (laughs) I mean, he he just, he just really just needs to let people know that the mobility issue is real and that there's some things that he needs to have things modified because he does have a a scooter to, you know, even get around in a little small areas. And if people have complained, but he can't walk, he can't transport it. And the trike is, just something that's really just exciting him about it too. Heck yeah. That's awesome. That's so sick. Yeah. Um, and you know, the the funny thing when you're making a trike though, so we have uh, two parking brakes on this thing as well. So, you know, when you're on a hill or just like hanging out, you can just do that and engage both the parking brakes. And uh, yeah, we tried to think of everything, you know, the three rear lights, the middle one's brake lever activated. I don't know. We, we, it has the fenders on all of them right out of the box already. So people don't have to sweat about that. And I don't know. I, I, I think awesome. <laughs> we're, awesome. we're very excited. So if you've watched this video all the way through the end, I just want to say one last thing. First of all, thank you very much for watching it all the way through. But also, if you are interested in actually looking more into the XP trike, you can use the link below at ebikeproducts.com slash XP trike, and that'll take you to the XP website directly to the trike page. And it is an affiliate link. I do get a little credit for it if you do make a purchase. I really appreciate the support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.